This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Russia will respond to price caps on Russian oil by shipping more supply to Asia, its energy minister Nikolai Shulginov told reporters at the Eastern Economic Forum in Vladivostok on Tuesday. Any actions to impose a price cap will lead to deficit on initiating countries' own markets and will increase price volatility, he said. Finance ministers of the United States, Germany, Italy, Japan, Great Britain, France and Canada gave a green light last week to the idea of capping the price of Russian crude to reduce Moscow's revenue in response to its invasion of Ukraine. Oil prices sank on Tuesday after a two-day rally as concern returned about weaker demand and the prospect of more interest rate hikes Trump support from OPEC Plus, S first output target cut since 2020. Brent crude was down $3.26, or 3.4%, to $92.48 at 11.27 a.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time, 15.27 GMT. U.S. West Texas Intermediate, WTI, fell from Monday's trading to $86.37, down 50 cents or 0.6% from Friday's close. Technical factors, including that the U.S. benchmark has been trading since Sunday without settlement due to the Labor Day holiday, helped support WTI over Brent. WTI still held close to multi-month lows. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. Crude inventories in the U.S. Strategic Petroleum Reserve, SPR, fell 7.5 million barrels in the week to September 2 to 442.5 million barrels, their lowest level since November 1984 according to data from the Department of Energy. About 5.9 million barrels released from the SPR were sweet crude, while 1.7 million barrels released were sour crude. Britain's new prime minister was working on what looks set to be Europe's biggest energy crisis support package so far as countries scramble to protect households and businesses from soaring bills and shore up struggling suppliers. Liz Truss, who took over from Boris Johnson on Tuesday, is planning to freeze household energy bills at the current level for this winter and next, paid for by government-backed loans to suppliers, the BBC reported, adding the scheme could cost £100 to £130 billion, £116 minus £151 billion. The government is also working on help for businesses, but this is likely to be more complex and would be reviewed more frequently, the BBC said. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. The European Union and United States have ramped up buying key industrial metals from Russia, data showed, despite logistical problems spurred by the war in Ukraine and tough talk about starving Moscow of foreign exchange revenue. The metal shipments highlight the West's difficulty in pressuring Russia's economy, which has performed better than expected and seen its ruble currency surge as buoyant oil revenue has helped offset the impact of sanctions. EU and US imports of Russia's main base metal products aluminium and nickel during March to June increased by as much as 70%, official trade data compiled by Reuters from the United Nations Comtrade database show. Aluminium Dunkier, France's biggest aluminium smelter, plans to reduce production by one-fifth in response to mounting electricity prices, a source close to the matter said. The output cut will last at least until the start of next year, the source said. Other aluminium and metallurgical firms in Europe have lowered output as soaring power costs have hurt margins for energy-intensive industries. Aluminium Dunkier, located near the northern French port of Dunkirk, is one of Europe's biggest aluminium production sites with annual capacity of about 285,000 tons. It employs more than 600 workers. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. Abundant rice supplies in key exporters may largely offset an expected drop in output after floods in Pakistan and severe heatwave in China damaged crops, capping any gains in prices from steady Asian demand. Pakistan, the world's fourth largest rice exporter, suffered extensive damage to agriculture, including rice, as floods ravaged large swaths of its farmland, while extremely high temperatures in parts of China at the end of August have taken a toll on rice output in the world's biggest importer of the staple. However, 
Global rice stockpiles are pretty comfortable and an improving Indian crop outlook should quell any supply concerns and limit any price increases from recent strong demand that has emerged from Bangladesh, said a Singapore-based trader at one of the world's top rice trading companies. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Tradeflow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Tradeflow News which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.